Have you ever wondered why we yawn? It's such a common yet mysterious phenomenon. This seemingly simple act is universal, crossing borders and species alike, yet it holds a certain enigma, a puzzle that has perplexed scientists for centuries. Today we delve into this fascinating topic and shed some light on four intriguing theories. The oxygenation and ventilation theory, the brain cooling theory, the evolutionary social behavior theory and the stress and arousal regulation theory. So buckle up as we embark on this intriguing journey to uncover the secrets of yawning. Firstly, let's delve into the oxygenation and ventilation theory. This theory proposes an intriguing viewpoint on why we yawn. It suggests that yawning serves a fundamental biological function of regulating the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide within our bodies. Imagine this, your body is like a well-oiled machine and to keep it running smoothly, it requires a delicate balance of gases. Oxygen is a key player here. It's like the fuel that keeps our cells working. However, as our cells work, they produce carbon dioxide as a waste product. Too much carbon dioxide and the machine starts to falter. Now this is where yawning comes in. According to the oxygenation and ventilation theory, when we yawn, we take in a large gulp of air, much larger than a typical breath. This deep inhalation fills our lungs to their maximum capacity, allowing more oxygen to be absorbed into our bloodstream. At the same time, it helps to expel the excess carbon dioxide that has been building up. But there's more. Remember how we said that our lungs need to be well ventilated? Well, a good hearty yawn might just be the perfect solution. The act of yawning stretches the lung tissues and promotes better ventilation. It's like giving your lungs a mini workout, ensuring that they are functioning at their peak. However, it's important to note that this is just one theory among many. While it certainly makes sense and has its fair share of proponents, it's not the only explanation out there. The human body is incredibly complex and yawning is just one of its many mysterious phenomena that we're still trying to fully understand. So, as we continue our exploration into the world of yawning, keep this theory in mind. Could yawning be our body's natural way of maintaining a healthy balance of gases? Could it be our body's built-in mechanism to ensure our lungs are well ventilated? Intriguing, isn't it? Moving on to our second theory, ever heard about the brain cooling theory? This intriguing theory suggests that yawning might be our body's personal cooling system, specifically for the brain. That's right, just like how a car radiator dispels heat to cool down the engine, yawning might be our body's way of regulating the brain's temperature. Now, you might be wondering, how can a simple yawn cool down our brain? Well, let's delve into the science behind it. When we yawn, we take in a large amount of air. This influx of air can potentially cool down the blood flowing to the brain. Cool air in the nasal cavity and mouth can lower the temperature of the blood flowing through these areas. This cooler blood then proceeds to the brain, potentially helping to lower its temperature. But that's not all. Yawning also triggers an increase in our heart rate. This acceleration of the heartbeat enhances blood flow and circulation, which can also contribute to the cooling effect. Moreover, the act of yawning stretches our jaw, which increases the rate of blood flow to the skull. This additional blood flow, along with the cool air inhaled during the yawn, can effectively dissipate heat, further contributing to the cooling of the brain. This theory is especially compelling because it explains why we yawn more often when we are about to sleep or when we wake up. It's during these times that our brain temperature tends to be higher. So yawning could be the body's way of ensuring the brain doesn't overheat, much like an inbuilt thermostat. Of course, this is just one theory, and like all scientific theories, it's subject to further research and debate, but it does provide a fascinating new perspective on something as mundane as a yawn. So, could a yawn be comparable to a computer's cooling fan? Food for thought. Now, let's take a walk down the evolutionary lane with the evolutionary social behavior theory. Picture this, our ancestors huddled around a fire under the vast prehistoric sky. One of them yawns and like a ripple effect, the yawn spreads around the circle. This theory proposes that yawning is more than just a biological reflex. It's a social behavior that has been honed and refined over the course of evolution. Yawning, as per this theory, is a primitive form of communication, a non-verbal cue that speaks volumes. It's a way of saying I'm relaxed or perhaps I'm bored. But how does this translate into a social behavior? Well, that's where the concept of contagious yawning comes in. Contagious yawning is a phenomenon that most of us are familiar with. You see someone yawn, 
and before you know it, you're yawning too. This shared experience, this communal act of yawning, can foster a sense of unity and bonding among groups. It's like an unspoken agreement, a silent dialogue that strengthens the ties that bind us together. But it's not just about unity. Contagious yawning may also be a marker of empathy. In fact, studies have shown that individuals who are more empathetic are often more susceptible to contagious yawning. It's as if our ability to yawn along with others is a testament to our capacity for understanding and sharing their feelings. It's fascinating, isn't it? This simple, everyday act of yawning might be a window into our evolutionary past, a reminder of our communal beginnings, a symbol of our innate capacity for empathy, an echo of a time when communication was not about words, but about shared experiences and mutual understanding. But as with all theories, this one too has its share of skeptics. Some argue that the link between yawning and social behavior is tenuous at best. Others believe that contagious yawning is more about mimicry than empathy. The debate continues, and perhaps that's what makes it all the more intriguing. Could yawning be a silent language of empathy and unity? Quite a thought, isn't it? Uh, finally, let's explore the stress and arousal regulation theory. This intriguing theory proposes that yawning might play a pivotal role in managing our levels of stress and arousal. It's a fascinating angle to consider, isn't it? The idea that such a mundane, everyday action could be an integral part of the body's stress handling mechanism. Let's delve a little deeper into this concept. Imagine yourself in a stressful situation. Your heart rate might increase. You might feel a little jittery or anxious. Now consider what happens when you yawn. There's a brief moment of calm, a slight decrease in the tension you're experiencing. According to the stress and arousal regulation theory, that's no mere coincidence. The theory suggests that yawning may serve as a natural response to stress a built-in coping mechanism that helps regulate our arousal levels. It's a bit like our body's own personal pressure relief valve. By yawning, we might be helping to diffuse the build-up of stress and tension within us. But stress isn't the only trigger. Yawning, it seems, also has a close relationship with boredom. Have you ever noticed that when you're stuck in a dull meeting or watching a less-than-thrilling movie, you tend to yawn more? According to this theory, yawning might be the brain's way of trying to perk itself up, to fight off the encroaching monotony and keep itself alert. So the next time you find yourself yawning, take a moment to consider what's happening. Are you feeling stressed or bored? Could your body be trying to tell you something? It's a fascinating concept to ponder. Of course, like all theories, this one isn't without its critics. Some say there's not enough scientific evidence to back it up, while others argue that the relationship between yawning and stress or arousal levels is more complicated than it seems. But one thing's for sure, the humble yawn is far more intriguing than we might initially think. Could a simple yawn be a sign of the brain trying to combat stress or boredom? Fascinating, isn't it? So, we've journeyed through four fascinating theories explaining why we yawn. We started with the oxygenation and ventilation theory, proposing that yawning helps to increase the intake of oxygen and expel carbon dioxide, essentially acting as a ventilating system for our bodies. This theory suggests that yawning, in essence, is a deep breath that we take to fill our lungs with fresh air. Then we delved into the brain cooling theory, which paints yawning as our body's built-in air conditioning system. According to this theory, the process of yawning helps to cool down our brain, thus improving its performance and efficiency. We then explored the evolutionary social behavior theory, where yawning evolved as a form of nonverbal communication within social groups. It suggests that yawning could serve as a signal to others, potentially communicating a state of alertness or readiness. Lastly, we touched on the stress and arousal regulation theory. This perspective places yawning as a mechanism to regulate stress and arousal levels. It proposes that yawning could be a response to a variety of stimuli, including excitement, hunger or fatigue. Each of these theories offers a unique perspective on why we yawn, a simple act that we often take for granted. They invite us to question and explore the complexities of our bodies and the natural world around us. While the mystery of yawning is yet to be fully unraveled, isn't it amazing to explore the potential reasons behind this common yet intriguing phenomenon?